Okay, so this next uh, project is going to be a speech synthesizer for the RC 2014Z80 retro computer. Uh, if you haven't viewed any of my previous videos or read my previous blog posts, then I encourage you to do so. This will give you a uh, background on the RC 2014 and some of the boards that I designed to, uh, to work with it. So I wanted to do this speech synthesizer because I remember having a speech synthesizer for my TRS-80 color computer way back in the day. Um, I don't even know what speech synthesizer I see that used. Um, but, you know, I wanted to recreate that uh, sort of 8-bit uh, robotic sounding voice experience on real hardware. So the first thing I did was to go onto eBay and try to find myself some speech synthesizer chips. Now, if you're going to buy anything from eBay, you need to be uh, really careful because the market on eBay is flooded with pretty much everything but genuine speech synthesizer chips. There's a bunch of fake ones, counterfeit ones. Uh, there's things that are described as speech synthesizers, but if you actually look up the part number, you'll find out the chip isn't a speech synthesizer at all. So the speech synthesizer chip that I settled on was the SP0256A-AL2. Um, it seemed like uh, something that will be very easy to uh, interface to an 8-bit microprocessor. Um, this is a chip that uh, Radio Shack sold for a while. There's some decent literature on it. Um, seems to be a pretty popular chip. And I was very excited that I found, uh, found them on eBay for four bucks a piece. Of course, those ones for four dollars turned out to be um, bad. Uh, they were basically the wrong variant of the chip. I've got a whole uh, video on that, discussing my experiences with that. Uh, so then I ordered some chips from uh, different sellers on eBay. I made sure to go with ones that only had positive reviews. Um, and what I got back was some chips that were completely fake. I don't even know what those were. Um, they weren't any kind of variant of uh, SP0256 speech chip as far as I could tell. They glitched out my address and data buses. They actually damaged and uh, caused damage to another chip that was on an adjacent board. Um, it's just basically some random thing that somebody had printed a different uh, part number on. So I was about to give up and I finally uh, asked around and I found that there's a company called uh, speechchips.com uh, and uh, they sell uh, genuine ones here in the United States. Um, they are a little more expensive. They're $30 a piece but uh, you know $30 for a genuine one is a whole lot more um, viable than four dollars for some uh, junk from a from an eBay seller so I ordered some genuine ones and this video will end up demonstrating a fully functional speech synthesizer because of that so that's the go-to place to go to is speechchips.com so here's the schematic over here we have the RC 2014 backplane here we have the SP0256 a dash A L two. Uh, that dash A L two is actually uh, pretty important because that ha means it has uh, phonemes. If you get a dash O one two um, instead, then you'll have something programmed in uh, Mattel vocabulary, which is not very useful. So make sure you get A L two. Over here we have the R C twenty fourteen backplane with the Z eighty. Uh, over here we have the speech synthesizer chip. Uh, we'll need to do some address decoding, so there's a 74HCT138N uh, here, and this allows us to put the, uh, put the chip on any of uh, four different addresses. I think I chose uh, 00, 20, 40, and uh, 60 hex. So the uh, 138N um, on a right will uh, enable this chip select to the SP0256 and the SP0256 will latch these data lines. Now the SP0256 uh, has uh, two uh, status lines that come back. They are the standby and the load request. Uh, load request goes low um, when the chip is ready for a new uh, phoneme to be loaded. So what I did is I ran those two over to a 74HC245N and I hooked up the uh, enable on that to a different set of pins down here on the address decoder so that when there's a read of that same address, we will get the status 
of these two status pins. So basically the, uh, the programming cycle for operating this chip is going to be to write a phoneme to it and then sit there and pull until the, uh, the LRQ bit goes low, then we can write the next phoneme, then we need to pull until the LRQ goes low again and you know we just repeat that cycle. Um, one of the disadvantages of pulling is it is going to tie up our CPU. An alternative approach would have been uh, possibly to hook one of these lines up to an interrupt and interrupt the CPU when it's ready for a, a new phoneme that might be more efficient. Um, I really didn't want to have to uh, play around with sharing the interrupt between the uh, serial driver chip and the speech synthesizer so I just opted for the pulling approach. There was a total of uh, six bits unused on this uh, this line driver buffer here so I brought those out to an external header so we could use those as six additional button inputs or something you know why why not make that available for other use um, also on here this this chip does need a crystal um, the crystals are kind of hard to find so you just go with the next closest uh, crystal that you can find on DigiKey or on eBay or whatever gets you close relatively close to the right value so there is a um, audio output that comes out of the chip and then we need to amplify it to make sound. Uh, we also need some filtering in here. This whole analog section is straight out of the Radio Shack um, product notes, the, you know, what, what would come in the box when you bought the chip from Radio Shack. So this is an LM386 uh, uh, audio amp, um, some resistor capacitor uh, filtering, there's potentiometer here for volume control. I broke it out to a pair of headers, one header here to give you uh, amplified output, the other header to provide line output in case you want to run an external amp. So here is the speech synthesizer board assembled. Uh, the big chip is of course the speech synthesizer IC itself. It is an SPO256-AL2. Over here is a 74HCT138 um, 3 to 8 decoder chip and it's used to place this uh, chip on uh, address 20 hex. Over here is a line driver that we're using to enable some of the output pins from this so that we can uh, read the state of the chip and tell when it's done speaking uh, one phoneme is ready for the next. I broke out a header here for some input ports if we you know needed to interface to some external uh, switches or something I just basically had six lines free on that chip so I decided to use them uh, here we have an LM386 uh, audio amp output to a speaker is here line output is there volume control so here's the crystal now this crystal I went with sort of the closest one I could find on DigiKey which was a 3.27 megahertz so this crystal is a little bit higher than the uh, frequency that's called for. That's probably going to make the pitch higher than it should be, I would think. Um, I do have some crystals around here someplace that I got from eBay that are a little bit closer. I may try those and uh, see how it affects the sound, but I figure most people, if they build one of these, are going to probably want to go with something easy they can find on DigiKey. So that's a 3.27 megahertz. Okay, let's take a quick look at the data sheet for the uh, SPO256AL2 chip. Um, the important part to understanding how it works is to understand the, uh, the phonemes that it can produce. And there's a chart of them way back here on the last page of the data sheet. Um, so, for example, phoneme number five is the oi sound is in boy phony number six is the i sound is in sky and we have a e as an end and then you can take these phonemes i think there's about 59 of them plus half a dozen uh pauses of various lengths you can use them to create various words so if we look um, up a little further in the data sheet um, there's a dictionary of common words so like the word emotional is an e M, O, Sh, U, uh, N, A, L, emotional. Um, the word alarm is a, la, r, m. 
so alarm. So by stringing these uh, phonemes together like this, you can produce uh, virtually any word in the uh, English uh, dictionary. So we can generate these by program control, and we can generate arbitrary speech from the computer. Um, you're not restricted to any kind of like a pre-existing dictionary with this kind of speech uh, synthesizer. It's pretty much unlimited. So I've uh, put the speech synthesizer board in the RC2014 backplane. It's in this slot here. There's a speaker connected to it so we can hear it. You'll notice on the front here is the, uh, the bus monitor board that I had in one of my previous videos and it will show us on uh, this uh, spot here the various values that are being written to the port on the uh, speech synthesizer so you can see the phonemes as they're written to the chip. Um, I've written a simple demo program that can uh, say three different things. So let's uh, run it. The first it's going to do is it's going to say RC2014. The next is the phrase Scott was here. And then finally, I programmed it to uh, recite the song Daisy Bell. That's kind of a traditional demo of uh, speech synthesizers. It doesn't sing it very well because it doesn't really have pitch control. So it's just kind of uh, saying the words. That's it for the demo. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.